we do today is going to be a little bit spinal focused. There's a orientation of the pelvis important. And we can demonstrate it for ourselves in our cat cow. So let's just warm up on our hands and knees and do a couple of regular that feel good for you. You know, just breathe in and let the back arch and breathe out. Let the back round a few times. Now just to tune in a little bit, you know, we think of this as a back bend. It is a back bend. We press into the floor and we let the heart space open. But I want us to notice what's happening to the pelvis. So when we're in this elevated cat, we call this a, a tilt of the pelvis. So if you look at what's happening to the pelvis, I mean, the whole spine's involved. But when we're in this round cat, we call that a tuck. So just do it a few times with special attention to the tailbone, what it's doing. The tailbone is tilted here, it's tilted up. And on the cat part, the tailbone, belly contracts, the tailbone kind of comes forward. If you think of the pubic bone or the tailbone, it's tilting. Uh, we call that a tuck, I should say. So come to seated. We, we often do it on all fours because it's so good for the spine. And it also uh, gives a little bit more freedom to the spinal movement. But we can do that same action seated. So lift, I usually hold on to something like my ankle or shin and use the arms to help that lift. The chest is lifting, the middle of the back is compressing. There's your arch, right? Now look at the tailbone. It is in that tilt. And then come back, round the spine, let that tailbone dip forward to the tuck and just do that a few times. Special attention to where the pelvis is oriented here. We want to include the whole spine. It really starts at the tailbone, at the pelvis, and goes all the way up the spine. A couple times like that, and then whichever leg you have in front, when you come back to your neutral, just switch it out so we're even because it does also open and warm the hips. So we want, want to do it symmetrically, both sides. A couple of little tuck tilts here. Now, I hope that vocabulary sounds right to you because I'm going to use it as a cue today. Tilt is tailbone sort of sticking out in the back bend, tuck, is it contracting towards the belly button in the rounds, forward bend spine. Okay, so let's try it in a couple of other positions to, to even more explore how our hips go. Let's put our legs straight out. This is our Dandasana, our staff pose. We're working on the spine, so if you need to uh, soften the knees, bend the knees a little bit, feel free to do that. We're going to try it this time without the hand support. So I'm going to recommend we clasp hands. This is a Shiva Mudra. Let the arms be strong and find that same action of a tilt. I mean a tuck and a tilt. Oh, I hope I don't screw this up. Tuck. Tilt. Tuck. Tilt. Really good for the spine. One more like that. We'll try another position. 
just widen the legs this time. Different little stressors on the hips. Doesn't have to be super wide. Focuses on the pelvis and the spine. But same arm position. Flip the back round, the pelvis tuck. You might feel like you're almost going back. And then come on through, there's neutral. And then if you keep going, lengthening, lengthening, tilting, you get that little bit of a back bend. It's harder to do in this position. Tuck, tilt, tuck, tilt. And you can see if you keep extending the spine, you'll actually come way forward, but with a very straight muscle, using the muscles of the back. Nice. Release that. One final position for those tote tut is a cobbler. You can keep it kind of soft so the heels don't have to be way in. Try to find a position where you feel like you can sit on your sit bones and have a nice erect spine, but with neutral. So we call this neutral. This is, if I were standing up, my spine would just be stacked, but of course a natural spine has a little bit of a curve here at the lumbar and a little bit of a curve here at the shoulders. Let's do it again and see if we can feel that. So we're gonna tilt and lean back as far as we can. Round, 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 tuck, 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 and then come forward. Lifting the spine, tilting the pelvis. See how far forward you can go. Do that a couple more times. Tuck. And tilt. Tuck. And tilt. And then let's just rest the spine for a moment. Just in our little butterfly, our little cobbler. Let the back round and let the head be heavy and come forward. And just release those muscles for a moment before we do our next series. Never be afraid to kind of move around. I don't know where you're tight, but Sometimes you can get a little bit of movement in the spine to help release. And come on up to neutral. Now, come to a shoulder stand plow. And I want to do it as a flow. What I'd like us to do, let's just start very simply, just with some spinal rolls. So here we are on our sits bones. And just make sure everything's going to feel okay to roll back and up. So you'll notice that when your back is, when you're going back, the back is rounded, the pelvis is actually tucked. And if you can get a little bit of momentum, you come to this point sitting where you can get that little bit of a tilt, really lengthen the spine. So just do that a couple more times. Last time, okay. We're gonna to try to do it from a squat. So take your hands. This is a good pose anyway, this little yoga squat. I call it a toe balance. Some people can keep their heels totally flat on the ground. Can you? No, I, I can't. It's just the way our ankles are, are structured, but we try to get our back nice and round in this little round ball. It's good for the ankles. And just try to see if you can do the toe balance part. So you let the heels come up on the balls of the feet and see if you can find a balance here. Yeah, Ooh. you can't look around, okay. Now we're gonna try to roll to plow. So if you wanna watch me, I'll show you. If not, just uh, follow along. Let the butt come down, let the back round, and see if you can get some version of your plow going back. 
and just breathe there for a minute. So we're feeling the back, the vertebrae opening up in that round spine. Not so much about the legs, just the back. And then find your momentum. Let the back roll down. Come up, cross your ankles, and just take a forward bend. So I've got my right foot in front for this forward bend. Oh, so good on the hips. I'm gonna try it again. Something that lets you breathe and relax just for a few breaths. And then roll up, other foot in front, forward bend. Good plow, round and spine, breathe. Let the back roll out, I got right leg in front, forward bend, release. should begin to really open those hips. I'm gonna roll back to plow. Couple of breaths, try to find the maximum release for that back. And then roll with the other foot in front. Roll forward bend with the hip opener. Okay, last time, come on back to plow. Breathe. And this time, we're gonna just, for fun, see if we can come to that toe balance, that little squat. So instead of crossing the feet, we're gonna help ourselves come back up to that little round, Squat. There you go. Now we can try the little balance. Work our ankles. And then we're going to let our hands be our support and let the buttocks lift and end up in a nice full releasing forward bend. I'm going to keep my knees soft because my hamstrings are still kind of tight. I'm just hang there for a moment. And then we'll roll on up with the feet support. Nice strong legs. Let let the energy roll up into the pelvis and let the pelvis be neutral for a moment. When you come to your mountain, you should feel neither tilted nor tucked. You want a nice stack of the spine in our mountain pose. And we'll, we'll try a couple just really simple flows to see how that pelvis works in just our regular raised mountain and forward bend. So let the arms float up, overhead. You can even do that little Shiva Mudra if you like that, or keep the arms wide, whatever feels good. And then let the back bend a little bit. Since it's warm, then let the arms come apart. Straight spine, straight spine, which is actually a tilt of the pelvis. So you come half forward bend as far as you can and then let it go all the way to the floor and roll up. We'll do that a couple times. Just feel the pelvis in this flow. Arms go overhead. Little back bend if that feels okay. Really strong in the pelvis. Begin the forward bend with a straight spine with a little pelvic tilt, nice and long. You'll get to a point where you can't go any further without rounding the spine and tucking the pelvis. You feel that? Come on up. Roll up one more time. 
Inhale, reach up. Little back bend. Being very mindful, open the arms. Half forward bend. Tilt, release, and round. Then tuck and roll up. So even in that simple flow, the pelvis is having to respond to all those angles. So we'll start a little standing series. Get some strength moves in here. So I'm coming to the front of the mat because we're going to step back, right foot back into our warrior one. So foot comes back, heel drops, front knee bends, let the arms come up and find that little back bend. As we try to tuck the pelvis, we're going to get strength in the spine and, a, and a, our hip flexor and that back leg is really going to get open. Open out to warrior two. Here we want a neutral pelvis. So just check. I have a very sway back, so my warrior two tends to look like I'm tilting, but I'm trying to lift and tuck it in. So I've got strength in my pelvis for this strong warrior pose. Just check in your alignment, see if you can feel that rotation of the pelvis. Good, then we're gonna to come to triangle, so the front leg straightens. Reach forward, not letting that pelvis let go, it's still strong. We're leaning forward, and opening the right side ribs in our triangle. The arm can be, do whatever feels best supporting to you. You can even stay on your hip. Traditionally, we try to raise the arm and look towards it, but remember our focus here is on what's our pelvis doing. A little bit of a tuck for most of us to stay strong. Now, we're going to come into a pyramid, sort of airplane style. We want our hips to face forward on the mat, like our warrior one. But come into a half forward bend. So I've got my arms out like an airplane, and I'm tilting my pelvis a bit to get my spine long and really stretch that upper hamstring. Breathe here a couple breaths. Now I'm going to let the back round and I'm going to release over that front leg. Now I can reach the ground. You may have to bring your feet further in or even bend your legs. Let that pelvis release and let the back round over that front leg. And just breathe long in this little pyramid stretch. Let's see if we can use the pelvis and the spine to come out of this pose. Engage the pelvis, engage the feet strongly into the ground, and see if you can come back up through that half long spine forward bend. All the way up. And then just step forward on the mat. We'll do that on the other side. I'm going to come see if I can watch how this is going. So we'll do that same, yeah, stretch, stretch out, get some energy. Left leg, this time goes back. Find your warrior one, check those hips. For most of us, it feels like we're having to pull the right hip back a little bit and pull the left hip forward a little bit to square them up. That's the pelvic alignment we want. Very nice. 
Very good, I see the work. Now open up to warrior two on this side. Watch the, the pelvis, watch the hips. A little bit of a tuck to engage the belly. Try to keep that knee from hanging in. You want it to kind of almost be aiming outward. That's it, that's perfect. There's your warrior two. And straighten that front knee, prepare for triangle. Check your hips, make sure they're supporting your spine. Reach that front arm forward and find your triangle. It doesn't have to be all the way to the ground because we don't want that pelvis to release. We want it to stay, yes. Very locked in, very strong in the center of those legs. Twist, this is an asymmetrical twist of the spine. Very good for the spine. Now, let the body face forward into that pyramid. So the hips actually realign towards the front of the mat. You can adjust your stance more narrowly if you need to. Forward bend into that kind of airplane pyramid. Nice long spine, there you go. That's your pyramid right there. Work in the back. Asking us to align the hips and then let go into the restful pyramid. Round spine, release over the front leg. Nice long stretch. The back can round as much as it needs to. The knees can soften if you need to. You should feel it in the front hamstring at least and in the spine. And then we'll reverse out of it. So we, to reverse out of it, we want to come back to that airplane, straight spine, arms come out, there you go, good, good adjustment, and then all the way to standing, using the, the hips and the spine, there you go, and step forward, very nice. Let's do it one more time, a little bit faster this time, but I really see good um, that it's helping forcing us to think about hip alignment and spine as we do this. So right foot back, find your warrior one, square those hips. Bending into that front leg only as much as you can maintain that hip alignment. Perfect, then open up to warrior two. Good adjustment. Really good. Find your triangle, starting at the straight, keeping those hips nice and open and square to the side of the mat. Triangle, yes. So my whole point of this series is that the hip alignment is taxed, stressed in each of these poses. Then bring the hips to the front, aligned with the front of the mat to that airplane pyramid. Straight leg or near straight leg, long spine, reaching the spine long, and then relax the spine into the full pyramid. The spine is gonna round, yes. Now it becomes more of a leg hamstring stretch. Come out of it, re-engage the hips, re-engage the spine airplane, there you go. And then just stand on up complete and come forward on the mat. Very, very, very nice. Same thing other side. Left foot back. Really square the hips forward. Very nice. Feel that little bit of a uh, tilt in that pelvis that allows the spine to lift and almost arch. Open out for your two. Take your time just like you are. Yep, where do my feet need to be? Start with the hip alignment and then let that knee bend into the warrior without sacrificing the pelvis hip. Perfect. 
come to your triangle. Think hips. That's what's grounding that stance. There's your triangle. And then beginning with the hip, turn those hips forward, airplane pyramid. Nice long spine, just the legs. Straighten that front knee as much as it will allow. There you go. Feel the strength in the spine, long spine, and then release into the full pyramid. Now it becomes more of a leg, hamstring, stretch. Good job. And then we'll reverse out of it. Find your long spine pyramid, airplane pyramid. Yeah. And then just come all the way up and step to the front of that. That was very nice. I like that that uh, series because each of those poses we have to focus on the hips. Now for our standing pose today, I was trying to think of something that would also help us feel pelvis, and um, we're going to do a single leg balance. It's kind of based on like a dancer's pose. So dancer is that one where we. You know, we balance on one foot, but I want to want to bring our awareness to the hips. So we're going to actually start in our mountain, nice strong legs, and first bring the knee to the chest and just see how that works for the balance. Notice how the pelvis has to tuck to get that knee up. Then without touching down, if we can, we're gonna tilt the pelvis and bring the leg behind. And grab your ankle, it really helps. So there's your little tilt. Just do that a couple times. Tuck. And tilt. Actually, come to a wall. One more time. Lit knee to chest. Tuck. And release that hip flexor, that pelvis. Let it tilt. And we'll try some version of dancer that works where we just let the pelvis continue to tilt and see if we can. Do a little balance tilt there, beautiful. Come on down, we'll do that little tuck tilt on the other side. A lot of work. We know it's a balance pose. I gotta send energy down the right leg. Lift and tuck the pelvis. Helps engage the abdominal, helps engage the spine. Then bring the knee to the chest, a little bit more tuck, and then the knee can come down and back. If you reach your foot, fine. If you don't, just try to notice what the pelvis is doing with that action. Tuck. Tilt. Which shifts our center of gravity to tuck, tilt. And this time, for fun, we'll try to bring it into our dancer. If you can grab some part of that shin or ankle, maintain the balance and keep the tilt going forward to the limit of your balance. Come on down, we'll do that again. We won't do the full um, tuck tilt now that the pelvis has um, felt where we're going. We'll try to go directly to the dancer balance. But the first step is still to tuck a little bit. Lift the right leg, bind the 
lever that you can hold on to. Now begin to let the pelvis tilt. And you don't even have to lean forward. It's a back bend just by the action of tilting the pelvis. If you can tilt forward, great. If not, find the limit of your balance. When you come out of it, notice I gotta retuck the stand to neutralize the pelvis. Whew. Try it on that other side. So first step is find our strong mountain, a little bit of a pelvic tuck, engage the core, lengthen, find that little balance lever, grabbing the left foot, and then very gradually let the pelvis tilt. You can stay straight up. Back bend, or you can actually tilt over that front leg. Both are working the target areas we're after here. Good job. Plus, it's working the ankle and all that stuff. Yeah, good job. balance. Huh? It takes full concentration, doesn't it? Um, we got through that one okay, so let's, um, we'll try it in the other direction. So this is our tilt in Dancer. Let's see if we can just do a, a single leg balance with the leg forward so that we can feel how the pelvis Tucks a little bit to maintain that leg up. Let's try it. it. Doesn't matter how high the leg is, it's stressing all those balance muscles through the pelvis, through the spine. So stand in your mountain, find that little bit of a lift, a little bit of a tuck. With and notice, I should have said this before, Carl. <coughs> Some people go into a tuck. Uh, tuck by tightening the buttocks muscles. We don't want that. That's not how we move. We don't move with tight gluteals. We want the tuck to come from a lift, a tuck of the pelvis. Spine gets very long, but the buttocks are still natural. And let that right leg float up, just like we did in that little knee squeeze and then begin to extend the leg, watching how the pelvis supports the strong single leg balance. As soon as I let my pelvis go, the leg's gonna come down. I have to tuck the pelvis to keep that leg up. Let it float down. Try it on the other side. So if we don't take any, if we take something away from this class, it's pelvic awareness starting in a, just a regular mountain pose, lifting, elongating, to achieve a little bit of a tuck, and then lift the left leg, keeping that tuck, keeping that strength in the pelvis, and then extending the leg or not, Really, this is more about staying centered in that balance. Come out. I'm gonna watch you do that. Shake them out. I'll do it one more time, and then we'll come to the floor. Very nice. A lot of work, simple move, a lot of work. Come on out. Oh, wow. 
that's a good way to come out a little bit of softening of the knee and then letting it fall you can feel that hip flexor work the whole time other side where's my pelvis lift the leg without distorting that strong even pelvis tucking tucking nice and then come on out yeah good job let's come down to the floor we'll do a quick little core series which this this uh, pelvic awareness might might help our our boat poses our navasanas because the way we typically get into them in my classes we start with a straight spine which is actually a pelvic tilt to get right on our sit bones balance maintain that tilt Find the balance of your boat. Hands supporting or hands released. Breathe. As soon as we feel it in our low back, you know we come out and just lift and release the spine. We'll do that another time. Find that long spine, a little tilt in the pelvis, balance. Find the complete expression of your boat, gauging the core, lifting the spine. Come on out. Woo. Now this time we'll try to come to a half boat. Half boat is that wider V. So we wanna be very careful. It's not worth hurting the spine, but we can all, always explore where the limit of our core strength is in this pose. So we come to our regular boat. Then we begin to let the legs come forward, the torso come back to the limit of our strength we hold. Hold and breathe. Hold and breathe and then let it go and release the spine all the way to the floor. Oh, let the arms come overhead, stretch long, let that belly just let go, that core. Rectus abdominis is just getting a little rest here. Mm. And we'll stay on our back for the next series. Um, we're gonna, gonna do our um, bridge pose series, which is actually all about a pelvic tilt and lift. So our knees are bent. feet are nice and flat on the floor, our knees are sort of hip width. We want, we want that pelvis in kind of its neutral orientation. The hands, palms down on the floor, the shoulders nice and uh, rolled back so that the upper back is nice on the floor. The first step in a boat will pulse through it like we do is to find the tilt. Sometimes it's actually easier to find the tuck on the floor because when we tuck the pelvis, the lower back comes to the floor and we keep that tuck and lift the hips off the floor. We'll keep it nice and mellow with our breath and then come roll back down opposite. Tuck, 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 upper back, mid back, lower back, release. The pelvis will find it's neutral. Prepare for the second pulse. Press the feet, tuck the pelvis, flatten the lower back, 
lift the pelvis, let the hips rise as you feel the weight shift to the shoulders, and then roll out of it. I call these bridge rolls. Very good for the spine. Once you're down, your tailbone will sort of tilt back to its neutral position, which for most of us, there's a little bit of space between the lower back and the floor. We'll come to the full bridge this time and try to hold for a few breaths. So all those steps, tilt, belly tuck, lift, raise the hips. When you come to the highest hip that your legs and your spine can support, you can Interlace your hands, roll those shoulders in as far as you can to support that bridge of lifting the pelvis up towards the ceiling. Without letting the knees go anywhere, they're trying to stay straight. They're actually usually feel like they're heading towards it a little bit. And then we're gonna roll down as slowly as possible. Continue to release the spinal vertebra. Upper back, mid back, lower back, nice. And just bring both knees to the chest, release that. This is a nice counter pose to just release the back. Roll side to side if that feels good. Keep the right knee hugging into the chest. Let the, let the left leg go long on the mat. Let that left leg engage. So it's actually working. Even if the knee's bent, you're trying to get it as long as you can and as heavy on the mat as you can. And we're gonna let that right leg develop up, foot towards the ceiling. Arms finding a good place to support that back of the leg stretch here and let the head come up, the back's gonna round. We try to touch our forehead to the knee for a couple breaths. Just breathing into that stretch. We come out of it, let the spine come to the floor. I usually like a little bit of a pulse of a nice long stretch here. Then I'm going to bend my knee and let that knee come to the opposite side for a twist. So just let that, the lever of the knee, the hip comes up, the opposite shoulder stays grounded. These are the lever points to get the spinal twist. And we're just going to breathe here into that twist. It doesn't matter if the knee comes to the floor, you really work in the spine. As long as that's happening, you're in the perfect shape for your body. Go ahead and let the knee come back to the chest for a moment. Bend that bottom leg, the left leg, and rest that right foot on the left thigh into this figure four position. Check and make sure your back is nice and long and neutral on the mat. Then thread your arms through that figure four, that opening, and begin to bring the left knee to the chest for a strong right hip opener. the breath pulse. 
and then release the pose. Just let that left foot come to the floor. Right foot come down, check in with your spine. And we'll do that series on the other side. So the left knee comes to the chest, the right leg comes long on the mat. As long as we can get it, it's engaged, heavy on the mat. And then begin to let that right, that left leg stretch towards the ceiling, supporting it with your hands on the back of the thigh or your calf or your ankle, whatever works for you. Once you kind of get it up there where you want it, you're going to raise the head as if you can touch the forehead. Kind of give your knee a little kiss with the forehead. Might not make it, it doesn't matter. You're getting a long, long, long back of the leg stretch here. And release out of it by letting the head, the back release, the head comes to the floor. That knee's going to bend and we're going to let it come to the opposite side into our twist. The left. Knee is aimed toward the right side floor, and the left arm can be in any position that helps you stabilize that shoulder to anchor the spiral twist of the spine. And just breathe. Look those tight areas. Give them a little time to release. We worked mostly with what we call a, a vertical spinal action, the back bend, the forward bend, or symmetrically vertical. The spine also needs to twist to maintain its mobility. Begin to release with that left knee come up. The right knee is going to bend. You can find our figure four. This is actually like a reclining pigeon. So by pressing the outside of the left foot on that right thigh, we automatically open that left hip. And when you're ready, begin to thread the needle, holding the back of the right thigh and bringing that bring it towards the chest. And we'll just release, let that right foot come to the floor, unwind. We'll stay a moment here and a constructive rest, I sometimes call this teepee pose, the, the feet come a little wide and the knees try to come together. This helps internally rotate that hip socket without a lot of work in the muscles. Just let those knees be the anchor for that hip rotation. And then we'll do the opposite. We're going to walk the feet together, let the, bot, the soles of the feet come together and let the knees fall open. So you're in this reclined butterfly now. And we're not pushing, we're not being aggressive, we're just letting gravity kind of let those knees, the weight of the knees, the shape of the pose, open those hips. In fact, what I like to do is to bring my hands to my belly, so I'm not pushing anywhere. Just let the hands feel the rhythm of the breath in the soft, reclined butterfly. On the inhale, the belly will expand, and on the exhale, it will naturally 
contract. We're not forcing, we're just feeling the action of the belly breath. From here, we're just going to gradually find our final resting pose, Shavasana. I like to take it really step by step, letting the knees maybe come up so that one leg can stretch long, and the other leg can stretch long. Feel into those legs, make sure you're not forcing any particular alignment, let them flop open if that's their natural resting position with the arms. Palms up, come away from the bottom body and just check for a moment any tight area that you need to adjust, slightly move, until it feels totally released. My final check is usually my jaw. Make sure my neck is released, the jaw is relaxed. Forehead muscles are relaxed. Ears are relaxed. And you just release all effort and just be right here, right now. Letting this resting position help integrate all the work. The mind is relaxed, but the nervous system is still active, consolidating what it just went through. completely let go as of time. All watch and make sure we end, but you just need to be right where you are. For another minute or so. Gradually becoming, begin to come back to a natural breath. Let the energy flow back into our bodies, hands, feet. Begin to move, respond to that energy surge. We'll roll to one side and bend the knees. And help yourself to sit up. No hurry. See if you can find a nice, straight, lifted but relaxed spine in our final seated posture.
we'll close with an ohm together. Just take a nice inhale. 